check this out. In my humble opinion, Jackson State's defense has saved Jackson State's season for the past two weeks. It's been a few times this year, but definitely the past two weeks. And offensively, they've been declining as a unit for the past two weeks as well. It's been abysmal. The play has been absolutely abysmal. And listen, this is not me hating Jackson State or switching up because I, I promise y'all I would be remiss in my duty if I was not fair with my critique the same way I am with the hype that I give them on this channel. So I, I shouldn't have to put any disclaimers of how much I love y'all and the fan base and how much of a, a great team y'all are. This is just me being fair with my opinion. The offense has been on a decline for the past two weeks. And if they continue to play this way, especially Shador, and their season could end in the SWAC championship. And I know y'all don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen. But this is me making this video is because I'm concerned about how those guys have been playing. But the main guy who deserves the blame because he gets a lot of the, a lot of the credit and a lot of the hype, Shador, the past two weeks, Shador's play has been bad. The offense has been struggling, but a lot of that is on him. He's QB1. We all know when it comes to high levels of football, you get just as much blame. The same way you get the hype, the same way you get the love. As QB1, as the star quarterback, you're going to get the blame too. Shador is not exempt from that. Too many people on social media always love to blame the offensive line every time something goes wrong. The offensive line is light years ahead of last year. The offensive line has given Shador ample, an ample amount of time for the majority of the season. Alcorn was not on them. I'm not even blaming them. There's only so much they can do on an obvious blitz when all corn is sitting in the house. You as a quarterback, you as QB1, who knows most of the time where he's going to go with the football before the ball is even snapped. If you see a blitz coming, in my mind, you know what I'm going to say. Okay, the line can only hold them for so long, and then these guys are coming back here to get me. So let me find where my check down is and give Sivy on the ball so that way I don't take a big sack or potentially a big hit. It didn't happen versus Alcorn. Going back to Alabama a and Shador not sliding is what got him out for the rest of that game. But back to social media. People on social media for some reason feel like Shador can never get any blame for the way that he plays. That's not how this works. It, it won't work like that at any program. As, as loved as Bryce Young is at Alabama, winning the Heisman Trophy, he gets blamed for when they play bad. Why wouldn't Shador? And here's my thing with it. Shador is a great player. He's one of the top quarterbacks in the FCS. He's a great young man. Got his head on straight. A great student. He's, he was raised properly. He acts like it. Doesn't cause trouble. I'm pretty sure he's a great student too. I know his grades are great. Am I missing anything? He's a great person and a great player. That does not excuse the fact that the past two weeks have been on him. Shador is not avoidant of criticism. He is not exempt from criticism. If his own father can hold him accountable in front of the rest of the team, what makes you think you as a fan can't hold him accountable as well? Again, he's having a phenomenal season. His stats look great on paper the past two weeks. It looks phenomenal. It looks, it looks good. It looks good. He even passed Kerry, uh, Casey Theriot. And Robert Kent for the touchdown record. A great accomplishment. But he has been playing bad. And he need, he specifically needs to pick up his play. Because Southern is most likely going to be back in that SWAC championship. It's grambling as much as I love y'all. Um, I do think Southern is going to pull this out. I hope not, but they could very much well do so. And if that happens... That means you're going to get two rivalry games at your house versus your most hated rival in a year. And when they come back, they are coming back with a vengeance. Because losing 35 to 0 does not sit well with anybody. I was at that game. I was on the visitor side. I saw Jason Dumas. I saw that look in his eye. He's coming back with a vengeance. If he gets one more shot, to not only beat Jackson State, but get to the Celebration Bowl in his final year of college football, yeah, he's going to come a lot harder. And if Shador is back there holding on to that ball, it could be trouble.
if he played like he did the past two weeks, it could be trouble. They should not be playing like this offensively at this point in the season. There's two games left. There's two games left. This is where you, you should be at the point where you're clicking on all cylinders. You should not be regressing as an offense. Now, thank God for Simeon. He's been a savior as well, a thousand yards in the season. So I guess, you know, when we talk about the offense, we can really talk about just the passing game. And I don't know if I want to give all the blame to Shador because my concern last week as well was why is Dallas Daniels the only one consistently getting open? Is it because of Shador only looking for him? Or is it because the other receivers can't get open? Is it because Bartolone is calling plays designed to get the ball to Dallas and Dallas only? I don't know. I don't know. So I'll let y'all be the judge of that. Because maybe, you know, for those of you who are at the game, you see you seeing a very different angle from what I did. ESPN does not have the best coverage of Jackson State games for the past two weeks. They just haven't. Especially homecoming either. Um, so I'll let y'all be the judge of that down below in the comment section. But... The point of this video is to say, I don't even want to use concern, but something needs to happen for Jackson State offensively because the next two games are big ones. Your season can end early if you continue to play this way. But you guys let me know what you think down below in the comment section. This is just my fair opinion. Once again, I'm your host, Kobe Orr. You're watching the Blitz City Podcast, and I'm out. Peace.